Hello, welcome to another video where I talk about evaluating performances. And today I will be talking about goalkeepers. The last time I talked about coaches and I think that you can still watch that video. Um, it's on my page. Just go over to the last video. You see it. Uh, I talked about evaluating coaches in a basic way. Basically, everything that I'm doing is about the basics. I don't want anything that's too deep or anything like that. Uh, just looking at the basics of evaluating performance as a fan quick glance, just stuff that you notice, very basic stuff that will tell you whether the goalkeeper is doing well or not and whether the goalkeeper is a victim of the entire team or whether the goalkeeper is really doing, you know, the job. Now, many years ago, actually, uh, this was around 2016, 2017, I remember that I had this thing on Twitter where I talked about, you know, goalkeepers. I was trying to compare goalkeepers in the Premier League and I came up with something called um, the handling of threats, basically, and dealing with threats. I've, I've forgotten the exact terminology I used. At the time, um, it was something related to threats and how they deal with that. Because I realized that there was a lot of confusion, you know, about how to evaluate goalkeepers. Everybody just kept being focused on saves. And I felt that that was way too simplistic you know because of course at the time i remember that it was the hair that was like the the person that was getting all the hype and i kept insisting that i felt that Otoa was as good and even better than the hair because um i saw a lot of things and i saw a lot more things that he was doing um that i felt the hair wasn't and everybody came at me <laughs> because of course it was about saves and it's not like um Kotoa was not making saves it's just that you know the years on uh, seemed more impressive and it was really baffling to me when years later the same people or same set of people who were arguing me back then and were all over my mentions came and they were like ah oh. you know or they were tweeting anyway and they were like ah oh. the year is we don't want this guy anymore in our club Look at how he, he doesn't deal with threats and blah, blah, blah. And he puts us in trouble and all of that. And I found that very amusing because I was literally talking about these things many years before. And I was laughed out of town. <laughs> but anyway, in talking about goalkeepers, um, I believe that the goalkeeper's job, obviously, um, saves are like the most obvious things you see. And truly, they are very valuable. Saves are valuable. If you have a goalkeeper that can make saves, that has the the reflexes and the instincts to be able to like get down or get up and make it a brilliant save it's it's fantastic and it's a great great viewing too um it's uh <laughs> aesthetically pleasing basically but the goalkeeper's job goes beyond um just making saves the goalkeeper's job extends to threat prevention and the goalkeeper can do that in a number of ways. I think the most obvious flaw that the gear had at that time, which I was pointing out, and which I think, you know, was very, very important, was the aerial threat. Now, the gear wouldn't come for the ball. Now, this video is not about the gear, by the way, but I was just, I'm just using that as an example. The gear wouldn't come for the ball from a corner or a set piece of, of any kind. And then someone hits the ball and he has to make a save. Now, he makes a brilliant save. But in the same kind of action, a cross comes in and Kotoa deals with it. And there's no threat, there's no save to make. Now, in both cases, a, a goal has been prevented. But one was riskier than the other. You get. The fact that a shot had to be taken at goal presented a bigger risk that could have been avoided if the hair came out and claimed the cross. And that's, that's something that happens like in general. You need a goalkeeper who comes out to claim crosses and if a goalkeeper is coming out to claim a cross the goalkeeper has to get to the ball has to take a touch on the ball if not you know it's a trap so you have to know that i can get this ball before you go out and get it and you make sure that you deal with that threat so for me threat prevention was more valuable than just making saves if you can prevent a shot from happening it's more desirable for me and that's one of the, the ways that I look at goalkeepers. In fact, I think it applies to a lot of things because crosses, even um, something like playing out of the back and all of that, it still comes back to threat prevention. Um, being a super keeper, 
So instead of waiting for the 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 person running onto the ball to get to the ball and come at you one v one, you come out first and you clear the ball. Now you didn't have to make a save; it doesn't register as anything out of the ordinary, but you have prevented a threat that could easily have been a goal, or at the worst case scenario, or not worst case scenario <laughs> really, but you know otherwise could have been something that you had to make a save, and it's just harder to do that. So I really like goalkeepers that um, prevent threats. So and, and that's something that is very important. Also, command of area. This for me is very important. Command of area. That box is yours as a goalkeeper. If you are too timid to command that box, you are not a goalkeeper that I want. One of my favorite goalkeepers ever... My favorite goalkeeper ever is obviously uh, Santiago Canizares of Valencia. Um, and then there's Buffon. But one of my favorite goalkeepers ever, and one of my favorite goalkeeper picks ever, in fact, I would say it's my favorite goalkeeper pick, was Oliver Kahn's pick. Now, Kahn was a monster in those three, four years, between 98, 99, till 2002, entering 2003, basically. Oliver Kahn was a monster. And he was a monster because, of course, he made some crazy saves. But also, there was this thing about Khan. It was scary. And he was scary because he commanded that box. It was his box. His defenders were under his command. That was his office. The attacking players, they knew that you get, you, if you got into the box, you had to contend with Khan. And Khan was the one with the upper hand. It was his territory you were coming into. And I like goalkeepers that do that because also what they do for their defenders is that they transmit confidence and assurance. So the, the defenders are not shaky or anything like that because they know behind them they have something. I was watching the um, the uh, a, a bit of a documentary on Italy's game against Germany at the 2006 World Cup. Pretty much one of the greatest football matches ever played and Cannavaro had a crazy game that day and then there was something he said he said that knowing that Buffon was behind him just gave him all the confidence that even if I come for this ball and I don't get it Buffon is going to stop it nothing is getting past us today and even the coach Marcelo Lippi said I mean Cannavaro said they were wondering why he kept on bringing on attackers and Lippi said the reason why he did that was because he saw his defenders, he saw his goalkeeper and said, nothing is getting past these guys today. Might as well, you know, add something to the attack. They cannot deal with our defense. Let's see if they can deal with our attack. Like they cannot, our defense can deal with their attack. Let's see if their defense can deal with our own attack, basically. So it's just about that, that confidence that you transmit. One thing that actually helped many goalkeepers in the past, and even the hair that I'm talking about, was when he gained some confidence you know, when the year first arrived in Manchester United, he was lacking a lot of confidence. He was a bit, a bit shaky. And there was a lot of pressure and all of, all of that. And he couldn't handle it. But once he mastered and assured himself that, yeah, I'm that guy, you know, everything changed. Confidence is very important in goalkeepers. But again, going back to what I said, I think that was also another of his flaws. He was, he was not as vocal as he could have been, I think, in his prime. He was just comfortable making saves. And just just being the hero, basically. And I, I feel like some, some situations could have been avoided if it was a bit more vocal, if it took more charge of the, com of, of the area. And that's something that um, I always appreciated in my goalkeepers, and I always will. I want to see you command your area and be in charge of that zone. It is yours. You are the king of that zone. Take charge of it. Command everything that happens in that zone. Talk to your players. Communicate. Shout at them, get them in the game. You know, make sure that th that concentration is 100%. It also helps you. Now, another thing I like and I, I always look out for is concentration. Now, when you play for a big team as a goalkeeper, ideally you're not expected to be facing too many threats. If you play for Manchester City, for instance, and they're not just a big team in name, they play like a big team. So you know that they're going to dominate matches. They're going to have possession of the ball for the most part. You have to be able to remain, you know, in the game. To concentrate. Because 
there will be points they will always give up moments here and there where the opponents come at them and if you're not fully concentrated or, or on the game at hand you lose something's going to happen right so your head needs to be in the game for 90 minutes even if you have nothing to do you have to be watching the game you have to actually enjoy football <laughs> as a go i know it sounds crazy saying a goalkeeper has to enjoy football but to be honest there are people who don't enjoy football and actually play the sport like benoit asu ekoto he never likes football so he just wasn't like interested and i remember some time back i was having this argument on twitter over ramsdale when he said that like he used to get bored on the pitch and everybody was like oh yeah it's adhd and all that i get but i don't think ramsdale particularly liked football likes football like that and that's just an opinion I, I i have i think that um if if you 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 enjoy the tactical side of the game and and things like that as a goalkeeper that actually sucks you in because in fact whether you have a did or not if you're a goalkeeper it's very easy to get distracted fans are heckling you behind you probably things are happening and i mean the ball has not come your way i've been a goalkeeper myself and i understand how it can be Things are happening in front of you and like you want the ball to come to you. Sometimes you just want to touch the ball so that it's not like you're not in the game. But you have to keep that concentration. And part of keeping that concentration is, you know, understanding what is happening on the pitch, seeing the field, seeing everything that is happening, understanding what is going on tactically and interpreting things. That could be like a hack. But generally, I want my goalkeeper to always, you know, be alert and concentrate on the game at hand and be able to make saves consequently or react quickly when um, attacks happen. You know, few and far between, but they happen. And then you have to be able to do that. So, of course, I've I've talked about threat prevention as a whole, which is a cross comes in, I'd rather you save it, like you, you claim the cross, than wait for someone to take a shot or a header or something, right? I'd rather you come and sweep the ball so all these things add up to you know what you're supposed to do as a goalkeeper so i want to see my goalkeeper do all of these things i'm not only fixated on saves and um of course there's there's um was shot xg plus or minus yes that that's very very important of course so far score records it as goals prevented either it's a minus or a plus of course that's that's a very important metric and it's a great metric actually for evaluating goalkeepers at a glance you just look at that you know okay this person has you know this person should be doing better than this just from looking at that number but it's even beyond that beyond that number which is very much attached to saves you know that you make go you, you make a save from something that's ideally supposed to be a goal or stuff like that right but even beyond that you have to be able to observe keepers and see how they prevent threats from happening before they happen if a goalkeeper can consistently make sure that he doesn't have to make a save because he has thwarted an opportunity three steps before for the opponent, then you have a great goalkeeper. Of course, still has to be a at least an above average shot stopper. I'd rather have a threat, a, a threat preventer or preventer. I'd rather have a threat, someone that prevents threats. But it's, but it's also like an above average shot stopper than an excellent shot stopper who doesn't prevent threats. I think I'm more likely to thrive with the first one because a lot of threats don't get to happen at all. And that reduces the risk of conceding. So um, at the most basic level, you look at a goalkeeper, you see how this goalkeeper reacts and what this goalkeeper adds to your team that ensures that threats are prevented and that is worth a lot and then of course you look at shot stopping reflexes and and things like that they also matter obviously it's very important as well and i feel that there are also steps to this thing when we talk about ball playing goalkeepers i don't even like the term to be honest ball playing what is that (laughs) you know but i feel like there are levels to this thing now the first level you have to already be a good enough shot stopper on your own with good reflexes and all that able to get down quickly and react and all that that has to already be like that's the f- basic level that's the first level before you start talking about what you do with your feet and what you're able to do and all that 
first of all, you all, you 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 have to be able to um you have to be able to make saves to be a good shot stopper, so that it's not every time that they shoot at your goal that your goal happens. You have to be able to make saves. You have to be your save percentage and uh, goals prevented and all of that. Yeah. So when you've done that and you are pretty good at that, then we can look at the extras that you add, such as, um, of course, ball playing. You are the extra, you're the 11th man. So when they press, you know, they are in trouble because you are, you're able to, um, you know, help the team to play out of that press. Another thing that is worth noting also is distribution. Distribution is very important for goalkeepers. A goalkeeper that is a poor distributor is going to bring pressure on the team. And that goes against the um, um, threat prevention ethos that I'm trying to preach here. <laughs> right? If you're a goalkeeper that cannot distribute the ball. See, when Manchester City signed um, Claudio Bravo, the idea was everybody kept focusing on like ball playing, but this, ball playing, but that. Bravo wasn't only brought to be ball playing. Like, oh, give me the pass and I'll pass left, I'll pass right. In that sense, he was also brought to be a good distributor such that if Manchester City were pressed and they had to go back to their goalkeeper, if the opponents pressed the goalkeeper, he could distribute the ball and get the ball to a teammate. Such, so, so if your goalkeeper can't do that, then the whole point of Pep's ball playing thing is lost because what's the point if every time the goalkeeper gets pressed he plays the ball and the opponents win the ball then nothing has happened he's just ball playing for the sake of it so that was actually the biggest problem second biggest problem of bravo the first problem was that every shot was a goal <laughs> which is terrible in itself but the second biggest problem that bravo had was that his distribution was awful go back to that season and look his distribution was awful and that was something he was signed for now if you have a goalkeeper that doesn't know how to distribute the ball doesn't know how to get the ball to you know a teammate maybe through a long ball or whatever you have a problem because at the end of the day whatever you're trying to achieve with your ball playing or whatever it's not going to work with a goalkeeper like that so you need to you know look at that as well distribution is very important so these are key things that and basic things that you need to look out for when looking at goalkeepers. What are the things you look at in goalkeepers uh, when you are evaluating goalkeepers? Basic things, things that are not too deep, but they tell you whether a goalkeeper is good or not, or whether the goalkeeper is worth your time or not. Let me know in the comments.